Hello students, welcome to this video tutorial on working with algebra tiles. So something a little bit different this time, I'd like you to click on Internet Explorer and then I'd like you to go to Google or if you have a Google search bar then I'd like you to type in virtual manipulatives, virtual manipulatives, virtual manipulatives. Okay, if you have to press pause so that you get the spelling right, then please do so. And then hit enter. Okay, so this is the website that we are trying to access. It is called Glencoe, Virtual Manipulatives Glencoe. It starts with www.glencoe.com. So click on that, Virtual Manipulatives Glencoe. Okay, so if you've got to this site, this is what it should look like. So why don't we add it to your favorites? So click on favorites and then click add. All right, let's select our grade, grade seven. And let's select our manipulatives. Manipulatives, and here we go. First one is algebra tiles. So click on algebra tiles. All right, so here are are manipulative. So instead of having physical tiles in front of you this time, I thought we'd do virtual tiles online. So we know we've seen these before, positive one and negative one. These are called integer tiles, right? Remember these? Okay. So we can also take them off the mat here as well. Okay. Down below, you'll see a text tool. So I want you to click on it. And then in the top left hand corner just click and that will activate the text tool okay so I want you to type in positive 4 so that's our first example that we're going to represent positive 4 so this is just going to be a review of our integer tiles so whenever we're given an integer we just bring over the appropriate amount of tiles so we have positive 4 so let's bring over four positive tiles easy right and then what we can do is we can click on the tile and then we can actually reduce its size. So I'm going to click on uh, negative zoom twice and I'll do that for this. Just because we, we're going to have a lot of examples and I want to make sure that our mat is fairly neat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to line up my integers so that it's a very neat diagram. Okay, so there we have positive 4. Easy. Okay, let's click on the text tool again, and let's click beside that example. Here, click once to activate the text tool, and I want you to type in negative 2. And then if you click off of it, and then if you click back on that text tool, you can move it down, negative 2. So now that you've got negative 2 there, I want you to create that diagram, bring over two negative integer tiles. And then we can click on them and click negative zoom twice and negative zoom twice. And then I will align them up here. Pretty good. Okay. All right. So let's go away from integer tiles now. and Let's use some of the algebra tiles. So let's click on the text tool. And let's click beside that example to activate the text tool. And then I'd like you to type in 2x. 2x. All right, I'm going to click off of the text tool and bring it down. All right, so this time you'll notice that we have a variable. This is not a constant. A constant is a number or an integer, but this is a variable, x. So we have here, we find in our algebra tiles, we have a green rectangle, which represents positive x. So what we can do is we can bring it over, we can click on it, and then I think we can rotate it this way. And then we'll put, click negative zoom maybe three times. And then we'll bring that there. So that's 1x. And then let's bring over another one. Let's click on it. Let's rotate it so that it's horizontal. And let's click on negative zoom three times. And now we've got a diagram that represents 2x. Okay. Now, they don't have to be horizontal. It's just... Um, I thought that it would uh, make more sense in terms of the space, but let's just try it. That was good practice to use that rotate tool. So let's just see. 
Will this look fine? If I can get them totally vertical again? Yep, I think this will work. All right, so maybe that will save us a step. Instead of rotating them, how about I just draw them or use them vertically? Okay, so this diagram represents 2x. We have 1x, and then we have another x combined. They represent 2x. Okay, so for our fourth example, let's click on the text tool. Let's click over here, and I want you to type in negative 3x, negative 3x. Okay, so if we look in our integer tile mat here, we see that we have a different kind of uh, tile to represent negative x. So let's bring over 1, 2, 3, and then let's click on each one and click the negative zoom sign three times. And I'll do that for all three of them. All right, and then I'll stack them together. So this diagram represents the algebraic uh, expression. This is an expression, negative 3x. Okay, you kind of getting the hang of it? All right, let's go to example 5. Click on the text tool, and what I'll do is I'll start down here in a kind of like a second row. And let's combine our algebra tiles with our integer tiles. So we have an expression here, negative x subtract 3 negative x subtract 3. Okay, so let's take this one at a time. Let's focus on the negative x first, okay? So the negative x, that's one of the red rectangles, right? So that takes care of the negative 1x. Negative x actually means negative 1x. Now, let's take care of the negative 3. Well, negative 3 is three negative integer tiles. So let's bring over three negative integer tiles. All right, let's reduce the diagram. So for the x, let's click on the negative zoom three times. And then for the integer tiles, let's click on negative zoom twice, I think is what we were doing. Okay, and then once I get them all the same size, I'll just line them up in a very neat diagram. So this expression, negative x minus three, this is the diagram for it. Negative x here and three negative integer tiles, okay? All right, let's go on to example six. Let's click on the text tool, and I want you to type in 3x plus 2, 3x plus 2. So what about if I kind of paused for a bit? You don't have to press pause. I will just wait, and why don't you try to bring over the appropriate tiles? I'll give you about a 10-second head start, okay? So bring over the appropriate tiles now. Okay, so let's see how you did. How did you represent the 3x? Well, I hope you brought over three green positive x rectangles. Okay, and then for positive two, I hope you brought over two yellow positive integer tiles. And then when we organize our diagram, I hope you were able to zoom and then get them all lined up. Now, when you represent these expressions in terms of tiles, as long as you group them together, it doesn't really matter if you're going horizontal or vertical. So in this example, I put the three negative tiles kind of horizontally. In this example, I put the two positive tiles vertically. It does not matter. So were you able to get this diagram? All right, let's go on to example seven. Let's click on the text tool. And I want you to type in negative 4x plus 4. Negative 4x plus 4. So if you don't think you have enough room here, you can move your whole diagram down here. I'm going to try to make it fit. Actually, I'm going to move these guys over. So while I'm doing that, it'll give you a head start to work on that diagram.
All right, I hope you were able to have the same diagram that I did. Again, as long as you group the like terms together, like terms mean the things that look similar together, then your diagram is going to be very neat. So I have four red negative x rectangles, and I have four yellow positive integer tiles. Okay? All right, let's go on to the, exa to the last two examples, and what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to use these big squares here. So let's click on the text tool and let's go to example eight. So two X squared plus three X minus two. So I don't think there's any way to make this an exponent. I don't think it's going to allow us to do that. So just keep in mind that this does not mean two times two. It means 2x squared, okay? 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. All right, so the x squared. So there we're going to introduce a new shape here. This blue big square represents 1x squared. Now, if we have 2x squared, then we have to bring two of these big blue squares down. And let's reduce their size by three negative zooms so that they don't take up too much room. Okay. And then after that, the rest should be pretty easy. We have positive 3x, positive 3x. So that means three green rectangles, positive x's. I'm going to negative zoom them three times. Okay, and then we're left with the last term, which is negative 2. Should be pretty easy. Negative 2. Okay, I'm going to negative zoom them twice, and I'm going to line them all up. Easy? Okay. All right, so we introduced a new type of uh, algebra term here. Okay, 2x squared, the x squareds. Now, there's also such a thing as negative x squareds. Okay, so I want you to keep that in mind. Okay, let's go to the last example, example 9. Oops, sorry about that. So, let's click on the text tool. So, I'm going to try to show you a different kind of strategy here. So, we have negative 3x subtract 2 plus 1 equals 2x subtract 3x plus 3. So I'm hoping right away that you'll notice something different about this question. So I'll give you a second to make sure that you've typed it correctly. Negative 3x subtract 2 plus 1 equals 2x minus 3x plus 3. Okay, so I hope what you noticed is that this expression actually has an equal sign in the middle of it. Now when we have an equal sign between two expressions, this is called an algebraic equation. Equation means equal sign, right? So if you don't see an equal sign, such as in example 8 or all of the previous ones, these are algebraic expressions. Whenever you have an equal sign, it's called an algebraic equation. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create another text box, and I want to just type equals in there because I always want to have that equal sign in the middle. Okay? Now, I might not have enough room, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over a bit. Okay, so let's focus on, let's see if my pen tool will work here. Let's focus on the left side first. The left side first. Okay, so what do I have? I have negative 3x. So let's bring over the three negative x rectangles. And if I could click on them and negative zoom them, Okay, so let's line them up here, negative 3x, 
And then let's look at the next term. The next term is negative 2. So let's bring over two negatives. Now I'm lining them up side by side here for a reason. Okay? And I'm going to show you why. Now, if you didn't know, like I know what the question is, I know what the answer is going to be. That's why I know to make them horizontal, but if you line them vertically, it doesn't matter. Now, let's look at the next term on the left-hand side. The next term is positive 1. So let's bring over a positive 1 on this side, and let's shrink it down a bit. So as you place the positive one under the two negatives, I'm hoping that you will notice something. Okay? What do you notice? Well, I hope you said that you noticed a zero model. So let's see if this will allow me to draw in between here. So I'm going to take the pen and I'm going to circle this zero model. And what I want to do is I want to show an arrow making sure that I've taken it away. Now, it's not going to let me draw because I've got a text box there. Okay? All right. So now, what I want to do is I want to focus on the right-hand side of the equation, right-hand side of the equal sign. So let's see what we get here. So 2x, positive 2x. So let's move these over, positive 2x. And I'm going to shrink them down. Okay. All right. Now I've got negative 3x, negative 3x. So this is probably a good situation where I can use the rotate tool to make these horizontal. And hopefully you kind of are understanding why as you look at the next term. Okay, so it doesn't have to be completely horizontal. If it's kind of a pain to get it completely horizontal, then just leave it slightly turned. All right, so that takes care of the first term, 2x. Then look at the next term, negative 3x. Okay, well, let's bring over three negative rectangles. And then let's shrink them down. And then let's rotate them. And I'm going to place them directly underneath. And again, I'm hoping that you understand why I'm going to do that. Okay. Now let's look at the last term here positive 3. Positive 3. So let's bring over three positive tiles and I'm going to shrink them down and I'll just place them neatly here okay so what do you notice on the right hand side here with the X's well I hope you said that there are two zero models. Let's use the pen tool and I'll click on red and hopefully it will allow me to create a loop around these two zero models. And if I draw my arrow below, I should be able to draw the arrow point here. Okay, so now what do we do with zero models? Well, we take them away. So this is one of those examples where you need to give me a second diagram so that's why hopefully you've got a little bit of space here okay so let's create the text tool again for the equal sign because we always want to have the equal sign in the middle and I could change this back to black I think let's see all right so I might have to delete this text box now I'll click on black Click on the text box again and type in the equal sign. Will that fix it? Yes. Okay, so let's place the equal sign somewhere over here. Okay, so what do we have that's remaining after we take away the zero model? Well, we have three negative x and we have negative one. So let's bring over three negative x's. 
shrink them down. Okay, and then what's left here after we take away the zero model? We're left with negative one. So let's bring over a negative one. And there we go. There's the left hand side. Okay, now this is called simplifying. What we're doing is we're taking away unnecessary things. All right, let's go to the right side of the equation. And this is a zero model. This is all gone. So what's left? Well, we have a negative x. Let's bring that over. Shrink it down. And then what's remaining? We have three positive tiles. So let's bring over three positive tiles. Okay, and then I'm going to shrink them down and then line them up. And here we go. So this is called this technique is called grouping, where we put uh, things that are similar together and we see if there are any zero models. So in this type of question, where there are zero models, it requires two diagrams. One, to show that you're working out all the zero models, and then the final answer. Okay? All right. So it is very important that you do not close the screen. I need you to call Mr. Ueda to show him your screen, and then he's going to give you the note sheet where you can transfer these virtual diagrams onto your note page. All right, so don't close the screen. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.